Okay, in this section we're going to be looking at rates of change. Uh, rates of change with relation to um, two variables. So looking at the relationship between them um, and, and ascertaining whether we've got a, a positive rate of change, i.e. it's increasing, or a negative rate of change. So just have a look at some, some examples here. So x is often called the, uh, the, the variable on the horizontal is the independent variable. So the independent variable will normally go along the along the uh, horizontal. So the independent variable is, you know, if we're measuring rainfall, for instance, that would be the months of the year. It's often time. Things, you know, this, this is the, it's, it's, it, the, these are sort of set in stone here, these variables. Whereas y is often the dependent variable. Um, and that's where we'll put the, on the, on the vertical axis, the dependent variable. So obviously it depends on what month you're talking about uh, for how much rainfall we've had. You know that, that using that example. Okay, so uh, if we set up, we're, we're just looking at a just a let's just start with sort of in general terms. Um, you know, let's just say as as x increases, so does y. You know, so we get this sort of thing going on. Then what we'd say here is that we've got a um, a positive rate of change along these sections of the graph. A positive rate of change. Um, and it's increasing. You can see it's it's increasing as x increases, y increases. So we'd say in this section we've got a positive rate of change. And oh, sorry, a positive rate of change. Um, and it's uh, the the curve is increasing. Um, so that's another way of of saying that uh, positive rate of change. Um, uh, or it's an increasing, increasing uh, relationship, um, and then let's say that we took a little bit of a dive down here, so it started dropping a little bit. So we went down there, and we went down here, uh, we went down there. So there, in this section, it's a decreasing or a negative, sorry, a negative rate of change, um, and we would say that the um, the function at these points is decreasing. It's a decreasing function along there, and that's fairly self-explanatory, isn't it? This is a positive slope; it's all increasing. This is decreasing. As we work from left to right, uphill, downhill, positive, negative. Okay, so there's just just some basics. Um, so rates of changes is going to be our focus now for the next uh, next couple of weeks, and um, there's different ways of measuring rates of change. Um, so, for instance, one that you're used to, if I could, uh, I could just look at another set of axes here. One that you're used to is if I give you two points, you know, say so that point there, which is I don't know, that might be one, two, and this point is uh, six, um, eight. Then you know the rate of change there between those two points is its gradient. Um, so what we're doing, whenever you measure gradient, if you looked at the gradient of this of this line, you know, we look at uh, we look at rise over run, wouldn't we? So we look at this distance here, which is eight minus two, so that's six. We'd have a look at this distance here, which is five, six, um, six minus one, which is five, and we'd say therefore that the gradient of that line. Was equal to six over five, or 1.2. So that would be the gradient of that line. Therefore, that's the rate of change of that line. It's a it's a positive rate of change. It's positive. It's positive 1.2. That is also known as a rate of change. It's increasing. It's it's uh, positive. Um, so whenever you've worked out the gradient of a line, you've been working out a rate of change because what you're measuring is how what in this case. Um, for every unit that x goes across, so for changes in x, what's y doing? Is it going up? And in this case, yes it is. For every unit we go across here, we're going up by 1.2, aren't we? So if we go across one unit there, we go up by 1.2 units there. Um, and that's that's the case as we go through. Um, straight lines are called co a constant rate of change. There's no there's no change in this. Every, every unit we go across here, we go up 1.2, across 1, up 1.2. That's a constant rate of change. Um, so, so straight lines represent that. If you're travelling in, in, a, in a car and you've got cruise control on, that's a constant rate of change because you're going at the same pace. So for every unit of time, you're increasing. So if we had a look at the graph of, of, a, uh, of a car, so this would be 
the independent variable down here. The dependent here is uh, distance, distance traveled. Um, and if we're traveling in a car right, at zero time, we're at zero. But let's say you know, we're doing this so that um, so that you know, after uh, every hour, let's just say this is this is time in hours. You know, that's one hour there. You know, we're going at 80 kilometers an hour. So after another hour, you know, put another hour down. We've gone 160 kilometers. Uh, that would be classified as a that's a constant rate of change. Now in reality, um, rates of change vary. So what we're going to have a look at are some situations where you know, the rate of change of is varying. And now um, lines are defined as being a constant rate of change or, or a constant gradient or you know, a, a gradient that is always equal. Um, we um, so you know in a, in a line we can take any segment of this line as I said before in the same gradient. But if we have a look at uh, if we have a look at a curve, so if we have a look at um, and I'm just going to pinch this out of the textbook here. So I'm going to have a curve that does something like this. Um, you know where that's that's uh, two there and this is minus five here. Uh, that's going through the origin there. Okay, so th in this case, we've got a curve that is gradient changes. You know, and that's why it is a curve. That's, the, that's what defines it as a curve. So um, let's say that you know, for this part of the curve here, it's increasing, isn't it? And then it levels out. So at this point here, it's neither increasing nor decreasing. Now it's decreasing. Now it's going back to increasing. So positive rate of change, negative rate of change, positive rate of change. Okay, so let's say um, that between minus five on and and two, um, yeah, what's what's happening with this curve? So you'd say from oh, I need I need to know where it's turning. So I'll give you another point here. So this is minus three, uh, two. That's that point there at, at which there is a turning point. So you'd say that um, you'd say that the the value of y is is sorry increasing from minus five to minus three, not including minus three though, but including minus five. It's not increasing at minus three because it, at minus three actually it is not increasing, not decreasing. It's what's called a stationary point. We'll do. We'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, the value of y is increasing from minus. 5 minus 3. Uh, also, it's increasing from 0 to 2. Uh, again, not including 0, but including 2. Uh, and the value of y is decreasing here from uh, what? From, from 2, not including. Sorry, from minus 3, not including. From minus 3 uh, to 0, and not including three uh, zero either so um, that's uh, that's that's rate of change different rates of change as we travel along the graph what else can we look at um, before I set you to work um, on on some exercise we're in chapter 18 um, uh, probably just one more thing I want to look at that's average rates of change if we can just uh, just have a little heading here average rates of change. Okay, so what we can do here is what we do if um, you know it's easy if it's a straight line. You know, we looked at an example a minute ago, didn't we? If we've got a straight line, it's dead easy. You just go all right. If I, I I know that the rate of change between two points is just take any two points, and the rate of change will be the same. We rise over run. But if we don't have uh, a line to work with, how do we measure the the rate of change. Well, that's why the, where the word average comes in. So what we'll do is, if we've got a, let's have a, uh, let's have a look at, you know, just a function that does something like this, um, and we want to know what between one one p between the points p and q, uh, q can have coordinates three nine. This looks like y equals x squared. This this curve. Um, so um, what is the average rate of change uh, over that interval from one to three? 
So, uh, so how would we? So the average rate of change. The average rate of change. Um, of y with respect to x with respect to x so that's what we do is just join a straight line between p and q and what we do is measure what the gradient of that line was so the average rate of change so what we're doing is using a straight line between two points to to find out uh, over that distance what the average rate of change is, change is because we can't find it exactly at any point because it's not a straight line so um, the average rate of change of y with respect to x um, from p to q, um, in other words, i.e. across the domain uh, minus 1, so 1, uh, 1 to 3, um, is, and what we do is we take the um, the average rate of change is the value of the gradient of PQ. So that is uh, 9 minus, uh, that's 1 there, so 9 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. So those numbers are arrived at, if you're looking at, the rise over run. So this distance here is 9 minus 1 and this distance here is 3 minus 1. So that is 8 over 2 or 4. So our average rate of change um, across that section of the of the curve or the function is equal to uh, the gradient of the straight line that, uh, that, that joins those two points and that gradient is measured by rise over run. Um, so the difference in the in the y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates, which in this case is four. Okay, um, I'm going to stop there, um, and we are now able to go to the work requirements and look at eight exercises from 18a to 18c, uh, starting at page 505. Okay, I'll see you soon.